And welcome back. We're, uh, I'm here with Paul Dye, my predecessor and uh, editor-at-large uh, now at Kid Planes. Paul is uh, one of the most experienced pilots uh, I know and has flown a whole ton of different airplanes. We're going to talk about a technology that I'm pretty excited about because I'm kind of a late joiner, but I'm loving it, and that's AOA, or, or uh, Angle of Attack Flying. It's a technology uh, that is available in a lot of APHISs now and that is really starting to gain some ground, I think. What, what's it your is. feel on it? So one of the interesting things is people think of AOA as this new technology. Well, the technology to display it is kind of new and to give it to the pilot, but it's been around forever. I mean, the Wright brothers has an AOA indicator. Wolfgang Langweish in 1944 wrote about it in Stick and Rudder and said, this is the only way to fly. But there was no good way to show it to the pilot. Now, every EFIS out there has AOA capability native to the software. All you have to do is calibrate it and make it work. So I'm on an EAA safety subcommittee to promote the use of AOA. One of the things that we did was we got Redbird to, sim to, to program it into their simulators, their Cessna 172 model, and we've been flying the heck out of it up at the Pilot, pilot Proficiency Center, teaching instructors how to fly it. Now, that sounds ominous, teaching them, you know, it takes long. <laughs> it takes four minutes to yeah. teach somebody how to fly AOA, yeah. and they're doing it like a pro. So I'm curious about that, since you're showing this to people who are probably aware of it, but they've never actually used it themselves. What's, what's their first reaction to it? It's incredible. It's like they go, where has this been all my life? Because you can literally take and fly, now, to either tone, we really like the tone, but, yeah. but let's talk about the display. You know, you can fly it right up to the red bar just below the stall, and once you get there, you can go ahead and roll the airplane to knife edge flight one side, you can roll it back to knife edge flight the other side. As long as the wing is flying, you have control. And as long as you have control, you can put the airplane wherever you want it. So, so let's pull that back a little bit. I think to, to, to be clear about it, we're so used to looking at an airspeed indicator. Right. And AOA is a completely different animal. Right. So, how, how does airspeed and, and AOA get right. coupled? So the problem with airspeed is that the airspeed indicator lies when it comes to the stall. Because your stall, there is no such thing as a stall speed. There's a stall angle of attack, and depending upon the G load that you're putting on the airplane, which is, can be done by bank or by pulling, your stall speed will be different. So, you know, you get to a 60 degree bank, the stall speed's way, way up there. You don't have to remember any of that. All you have to remember is that the AOA never lies. When it gets red at the top, it's going to, at the top, at the top bar, it's going to stall, or when it gets really, 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 really anxious in your ear, it's yeah. going to go ahead and stall. So as long as you keep that frenetic level down a little bit and keep the bars down lower, the, the wing is flying. You're in good shape. So you, you've been flying with AOA for some time. Walk, <laughs> walk me through sort of a flight. How do you practically use AOA indications in so, flight? So the first thing you do is on takeoff, you can fly it on what we call the green donut, which is really the best, the best lift you can get out of the wing. And if you're at that point and the engine fails, you're not that far from, you just keep that, that best AOA. You're going to have to pitch over pretty well. And you can put the airplane in a safe spot and land it at absolutely the slowest speed. If that means you take the wings off on trees, great, no problem. But you're going to do that so slowly that you're, going to have, you're, going to, you're not going to get killed. Um, on, on landing, when you're in a, in a, on a hot, high, heavy case, we always talk about the base to final turn, turning in here to Oshkosh with... A, biggest load you ever carry, right? Um, it's always, it's not going to lie, you can tighten up the turn until the AOA is below stall and you're not going to stall the airplane. It's absolutely fabulous. Now, we use it on approach as well, but that's not quite so important. What's really great is when you're doing a lot of maneuvering, especially low altitude maneuvering, um, there's a great story of a pretty pretty prominent pilot who was busy up in the back country circling over or circling into land and he was looking at an eagle's nest in a tree and it was fascinating him and all of a sudden the thing started chirping in his ear and he realized he'd pulled too tight he relaxed the back pressure and, and, and was able to land safely without ever looking inside the airplane without ever looking inside the airplane that's what we like about the audio portion of these AOAs because you don't what you're not looking at this thing on the, uh, you're never looking at the panel, you're not really looking yeah. at the glare shield, you're looking out here, or if it's right, right uh, pattern, you're looking out here. 
So we know, you know, from student pilot days, you know that the airspeed indicator lies in different ways, from right. density altitude to angle of yep. attack and all of that. Yep. Do you have to compensate for AOA indications in any way? Nope. The AOA is always going to tell you the truth. And, and the neat thing here, we talk about student pilots, Mosaic is probably going to end up, most Mosaic airplanes will probably have AOA in them, and that's going to be the training fleet of the future. We're working hard with the FAA to make AOA training part of the curriculum. If the airplane is equipped with it, you'll be tested on it, and you're going to find that you can fly much, you can fly better in shorter number of hours using AOA than you will with anything else. Because you kind of don't have to do the mental calculations. You don't have to do any mental calculations. It just works. Yeah. It's really cool. So, un, you know, unlike a, an airspeed indicator system that you, as a pilot or a builder, you don't really do any calibration. I understand there is a calibration right. process. So you do have to calibrate your AOA, and, uh, and that involves going out and doing a stall, which, you know, not, lot, not, not all private pilots do full stalls nowadays, but that's okay. Somebody at your airport that can fly your airplane can do that stall, cal that, that AOA calibration if you want. But basically it means you're going to do a straight-ahead stall, let it break, and most of the systems now, you don't even have to punch a button at the stall. It records where the stall happened. So it kind of walks you through it. it, it pay, it's paying attention while you're flying the airplane. All you have to do is fly the airplane, and it'll go ahead and, and do it for you. So you want to make sure your AOA is calibrated. If you have it, and you have the pitot tube that's appropriate for it, and they're pretty cheap if, if you didn't get one, um, go ahead and do the calibration, and now you have a life-saving device on every flight. So I think it's fair to say that it, certainly in the experimental world, all of the modern EFASs have this capability built yeah. in? Yeah, all the modern EFASs have the, have the capability, have the software. They work just a little different than each other, but, but basically the rule is if it sounds frenetic, you're getting close to danger. If it gets red, you're getting close to danger. If it's getting green or very calming tones, you're in good shape. I like calming tones when I'm flying. I like it. calming tones, yeah. So if you don't have an EFIS in your airplane or if you don't have a modern home belt, what are your options for having AOA in the airplane? Good question. There are a lot of standalone AOA systems that you can buy. I was just talking to Mark at, uh, a at Alpha Systems. He's got some great systems out there. AFS builds a standalone system. There are other standalone systems out there. Garmin will sell you a standalone system. Um, so I think Bendix King still has one. They used to have one. I'm not sure if they're still doing it. And one of the neat things is that if you're flying a certified airplane, the FAA makes installing this critical safety device extremely simple. You don't need a full STC. You don't need a whole lot of paperwork. You can just go ahead and install it. So we're talking about uh, certified aircraft versus experimental aircraft. Right. The technology is the same, correct? Technology is the same. That's right. It's just. You know, it's harder to add things to a certified airplane without paperwork. Right. Experimental, you can add anything you want anytime you want. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, I've flown some systems. I've probably flown 30 some of the 40 systems that are on the market. Yeah. All of my airplanes have at least two systems installed. Not because I need two systems, but because I'm a media person, so yeah. I've been testing them. Yeah. And so they just, they just stay in so I can compare them with each other, and they all work great. Yeah. So it, it's a basically a fundamentally simple system, right? Incredible. It's, it's yep. looking at two stat or two air sources yep. and comparing them. Right. And there are systems out there that don't use any air data. Yes. They're computing that the 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 platform is computing the difference between the flight path angle and the and the uh, the various it's do, various angles that you've got the angle to the deck and that and it's actually giving you what we call a derived AOA. Um, they're okay, they're not as good as a sense day away, okay. but they're better than nothing. Absolutely. So I'm going to ask you a question that takes you back to your previous job. I understand that there's some very large vehicles that have been flown very, very high that use AOA extensively. How did that work in the shuttle? Yeah, uh, the AOA in the shuttle, we basically used a derived AOA until we got down to about Mach 3 where we put out our air data probes. The reason we didn't put them out earlier is because you didn't want to melt them off, right? I mean, they were going to melt off <laughs> right. if you put them out any faster. Um, and then we used AOA as a primary means of control. Uh, we also used it, the derived AOA, up, up high doing entry, during the hot part of entry, uh, to make sure we didn't melt the wings off or we didn't fall into the sky and, 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 and get captured too early. Yeah. So AOA is a primary flight control system uh, in spacecraft. So, you know, be an astronaut. Put AOA in your airplane. 
So clearly, you know, most of the astronaut corps had some military training, and certainly back in the day. Right. So to get them over the hump of, of understanding how AOA worked, I mean, most military aircraft use that primary as well, so there's part of that training. They, they use it from day one. Yeah. In, in most, most airplanes, they use it from day one. And I mean, it's just primary way to fly. Absolutely. So now we have the, the, the challenge of getting people who are trained on airspeed, airspeed to do that. What do you think, the, besides like demonstrating, what do you think like the core tactics are for getting them over the hump? Uh, right now, what we're doing is we're trying to get the instructor core around the country to, be, to fly it. And I have yet to get anybody who actually flew our demo who said, oh, I really hate that. That's terrible. I, I'd never use that. Every, every single one of them goes, where has this been all my life? This is awesomely cool, and I'm going to teach all my students about it. And then we just start making it an accepted fact that you have it in your plane. Yeah. That's it. It's, it's cultural. And then you use it every day in flight, and it just integrates into your scan, your audio right. scan, your visual right. scan. Absolutely. It's there all the time. I like to use the example of ADS-B. When we, you know, we, we were kind of forced into putting ADS-B in all our airplanes. Now I know pilots who, if their ADS-B in isn't working, they won't fly. <laughs> and we're only talking about four years since the mandate happened. So yeah. I think once people fly with it, they're going to get very excited about how much more margin it gives them. Absolutely. Uh, and, and I use it all the time in test flying. When, uh, generally, I'll calibrate the AOA on the second flight of a new airplane, and I use it all the time. So that's actually a good point, because in your work, and you, know, you do a lot of phase one flight testing, yep. you do a lot of, and, and in some airplanes that are a new design, or at least they're, they're still figuring it out. Once that is calibrated, how valuable is that for part of phase one, and particularly to get comfortable with a new design? It's very, very comfortable, especially when you're doing, doing aerobatics or when you're just doing uh, steep turn type stuff, uh, accelerated stalls. You have a much better idea of how close you are to the stall uh, before you get there, so you can start feeling out what the, th what the airplane is trying to tell you. Um, so very, very valuable. I would think too that you know in a new design when you're trying to figure out how the stall progresses, what does it right. do in the stall? Does it right. drop a wing? Right. Is, does it give you any warning? Yeah, you want to you want to sneak up on it. So that that's like going okay, we're getting close. Start getting sitting close. up right. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. And I think too, especially aerobatics, anything with the wing loaded. Yep. That's got to be a huge, huge benefit. It, it is. I I do it all the time. I do a lot of aerobatics at altitude where I live much higher than where I learned aerobatics at sea level, right? Yeah. And it's really nice having that AOA telling me, you know, you're pulling a little hard in this loop right now uh, because uh, you just don't have the air density that we do down lower. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Paul. I appreciate uh, your time today. I will add a, a plug that I've recently started flying uh, with AOA. I wasn't so much skeptical as I thought, okay, well, I've been flying okay for a long time using airspeed. I know my airplane really, really well. And uh, I installed the system, calibrated it, and sort of gave myself a self-lesson on it. One day I was a little tight on the base to final turn, trying to suck it in, and I'm looking outside and I hear the AOA start to come alive. And I looked down at the airspeed and I thought, if I hadn't had it, I would have thought I had plenty of airspeed. It was a real wake-up call. So I'm, I'm with you and all the instructors <laughs> that went, hey, this is a really good thing. Really I wish cool. I had had it. So. Yep. Well, Paul, thanks again for, uh, for joining us. Thank you for watching. Appreciate uh, support from uh, Avemco and Tempest on this project. And uh, we've enjoyed being here this week. Thanks for watching.